Hey, this is Preston, the main developer for Cabal Essentials, um, BeamMP. And since I released the last tutorial a while ago, um, things have changed a lot basically with everything. Um, we've switched over to a JSON format now. And I've been getting a lot of requests for help with setting it up. Um, so the new system is actually a lot more complex than the old one. So um, with that said, I'm not going to um, cover everything in one video like I did before. Instead, we're going to go video by video, um, and we're going to start with the extreme basics. So, This is assuming you just want to host a server and get it working for you and your buddies. Um, so this isn't going to cover anything in depth. Um, this is just going to cover how to make yourself owner on the server and um, basic management stuff. We're going to start. Cool. Beam MP. Right. Go through here and we're going to go and grab our server. Um, you can watch other tutorials to learn how to actually set up the server itself, but we're just going to go and start with a fresh um, server for this tutorial. And this goes in tutorial server. We're going to go ahead and grab this guy. Open it up. We are going to go ahead and drop this exe in the bit below. We have bmpserver.exe. Good. We're going to go and run this for the first time to generate all the files for it. Um, we do have an auth key. Um, and this city stake, what I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go. Yeah. We're gonna go and paste that right there. So we have my old server. Um so yeah, we can go and run that. We'll do all of the stuff that it might need to do. Give it a few moments, and there we go. Now we have this resources folder up here. This is one that we really want to pay attention to. So now we're gonna go to the BMP forms. Go ahead and find resource and plugin area. From here, we want Cobalt Essentials 1.5.3. This actually isn't 1.5.3. This is the 1.6.0 beta, which I'm on right now. Um, so it this will work for 1.6.0 and 1.5.3. Um, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and label it as 1.6.0. But if you're on the older version, you haven't quite updated yet. Um, it'll still work for you. What we really care about, though, is I scrolled all the way down to the bottom for some. Go to the GitHub. Here. We have the whole thing. We want to click on code and download zip. And it's going to go and server. I'm going to press enter to save it here. Here we go. And you want to open it? Be doing the exact same thing. So drag two. Gonna remove this little bit. Actually, no, we're gonna leave that bit. Give it a couple moments, and when we come back to here, follow through to resources server. There we go. We have Cobalt Essentials Master. Go and delete this bit right here. And now you can actually leave the name like this. It's supported, though. Um, just to be safe, we normally go ahead and remove that little master bit off the end. Alt essentials. There you go. Now, this is the bit where a lot of people actually mess up. They want to hop straight in here. Up. So this is this is a problem that a lot of people also make, is that now they have two layers. You do not need two. So. I've accidentally messed up, and now there's a second file in here. We're actually just going to drag this one back out. Eat this first one. This is the one that we want. 
Oh, if you make that same mistake because you're following my tutorial, I'm sorry. <laughs> but then, so you should go into server, go into Cobalt Essentials. And in case you're watching and you're kind of confused, I lied. You do actually want to delete this little guy right here and make it simply say server. Regardless, now we have server, Cobalt Essentials. From here, we can go through all of our stuff and... Um, this is the bit where people normally mess up because they think they can just here and go into Cobalt DB. You cannot. Cobalt DB is the bit that stores all the JSON config files. What you have to do is instead you have to run the uh the server once. Let it load everything, you see all this? This is it generating all the new files, and then it'll pop open. Now, I have my server. I've ran it for the first time. Go ahead and navigate to our um to our Cobalt DB file right here. This stores all of the JSON in it. So, here, we have a couple different bits. We have commands.json. We'll go over this in the future, but this just stores all the commands that you can use. We have config.json. Um, this stores everything that you might want. So, for your Archon password, we can change this to uh, secure password. And we'll get into Archon in just a moment. We're going to go and cover that one in this tutorial. We have Archon keep a live tick. Um, this is false for now, but um, it used to be a feature that we had that didn't really work. Um, command prefix, this is a bit that you use before command. Um, the backslash is there just because it's a slash, but it, for example, if I want to change it to exclamation mark, I do that. But since we're using a slash, you have to do backslash slash. Um, if Archon enabled, this is if you want the Archon, um, Archon port, and this is Cobalt DB port. Um, it's important for Archon port and Cobalt DB port to be unique for every server that you're running, otherwise it will not work. So if I'm running multiple servers, I want this Cobalt DB port to be 10814, and then I want the next one to be 10815 or something unique. They cannot be the same, otherwise it will break everything. Enable colors, this is the output, um, whether you have colors enabled on it. If you're using a console which doesn't support colors, um, you may want to disable that. Max active, max active players, um, this is how many non-spectator players can be on the server. Um, once this cap is reached, um, the server will start setting these players to spectators where they can simply watch until a person leaves. They will not be able to spawn cars. This is another common issue that we have. People will come through and be like, why can't they spawn cars after this many people? Um, enable whitelist. Um, you have enable debug. Um, you don't really need debug enabled. You can ignore that for now. Whitelist is if you want the server whitelisted, but we will get into that in just a moment. So... Normally where you want to start is you want to make yourself owner on your server. Um, so for that, player data actually isn't used. Um, permissions here stores all of the little permissions like who can send messages and all that. We'll get into all this stuff later. Um, vehicles stores all the stuff on vehicles. <coughs> what we care about right now is player permissions. You'll see right here we have a bunch of groups. These groups um, are all just categories the players are put into once they've joined the server. So we have group default. This is people who have just joined the server and have no real significance. Um, you see they're not muted, they're not banned, they're not whitelisted, um, and their level is 1. That level is just a permission level. You can think of it as like a... Uh, almost like an RPG, but it doesn't move up. Um, so the higher your level, the better skills almost you can use, and you can think of skills as commands, right? Um, and that's how the Cobalt Essentials permission system works. So if we go into commands, right, stop. This stops the entire server. This is a level 10 command. So in order to have that, in the player permissions file, you need to be at least level 10. You see that? And you can change these numbers around. You can give this to everyone. But once again, we're not quite covering that in this tutorial. We're mainly just covering the stuff that you need to know to set up a server. So once we're in here, um, what we want to do is we want to get our name into this list. And there's two ways to do that. One way is the way that a lot of people opt for, though it's actually the harder way, um, is that we're going to hop in here. 
and we're going to add a new entry. So a little thing about JSON, you have all of these little entries that are marked with their title as a string. So groups are denoted by this group colon. You can create a new one with the group colon name. So a string just means that we have these quotation marks before it. So we have the name of the group, we have a colon, and we have an opening curly bracket. And what's important is that this opening curly bracket is met with a closing curly bracket down here. That's one thing that a lot of people find it a little bit difficult to remember. And then you have another one at the very bottom, which is followed by this opening one that tells it that everything here is in a list. Um, and because it's in a list, everything is separated by commas, right? So what we want to do is we want to create a new entry. It's easiest to copy it from one of these guys. Let's say group colon guest. Let's copy it from this guy. We're going to go down to this closing curly bracket. We're going to create a new line. Now, this looks fine, but what you remember is that it's a list. We're listing things. And in English, for example, you have to say um, A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, D. And that's how you do it. You don't put a comma at the end of the D, but you have to separate everything with a comma. If I said A, B, C, D, it wouldn't make any sense. You can't tell they're separate. You'd think it's one thing. So we have to come back up to this curly bracket, and we have to add a little comma right there. Now we have group guests. There we go. But I'm my name isn't group guests, so you're gonna set this to your form name. My form name is Preston. And I don't want to inherit all this stuff from guests, so what I can do is I could manually set everything here. I could say 10. I could remove this band reason. Um I could say um band false, I could say whitelisted equals true. And I could say YouTube false, I could say all that stuff. And just one thing to note is that if I am doing that, I have to remember that rule with the commas. The comma does not go on the last entry. And if you only have one entry, you don't need the commas. So we're actually going to do is we're going to go down to one entry. Instead of doing all of that, we're going to say group colon. And remember, because the group names are a string, we're going to say owner. There we go. And now that means that instead of entering all of this little information here manually, what it's going to say is it's going to say, oh, this guy's an owner. See, his group is owner. So he belongs to owner. So he's not muted. He's not banned. He is whitelisted. His level is 11. You see? And what's important to know is that even though these are one big thing where it's group colon guest without the quotes, this is group quote colon quote. See, they're separated. And that's a little bit confusing, but once you've got that done, it's pretty easy. And no comma, because it's one thing. We're going to go and save that, and that is the first way of doing it. The next way of doing it is with Archon. So, if you remember this config file here, we had all of these little bits. So, what we want to do, we're actually going to go back. a little bit until we can find it and for some reason it doesn't want to work. <laughs> there we go. Going back to this resources plugin area. Back to Cobalt Essentials and I've actually linked it here. We want to go to IceCon. Where are you? Here we go. IceCon here. Um, And we want Windows AMD 64. You can ignore the AMD bit, I think. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's just AMD 64 because it's third because it's 64 bit. Um, and AMD created that, so you're gonna grab the AMD 64 one. If that doesn't work, and you're running an Intel build, you may need the other one. But I'm pretty sure that for even Intel builds, it's still AMD 64. And we can actually drop this EXE anywhere. Um, I like just to put it in with the server because um, it's useful. But you can put this anywhere. What you do is you go and download it. And as soon as you download it, it just goes ahead and it works. See? Now we want to connect. This is the important bit is that if you port forward your Archon port, um, you can actually use the, the um, IP that you use to connect to your server. Um, but since we don't have it port forwarded, we're going to say 127.0.0.1. This is called your loopback protocol. This will always bring you back to your home computer. And 
And we're going to go back into this file. And you see our RCOM port is 20814. And so we're going to type in colon 20814. Our password is the word. You see? Right there. But just because I can, I'm going to go ahead and delete the D. So our password is now wrong. And I actually press the wrong button. We're actually going to type in a wrong password. I forgot the port. <laughs> so here we go. I just typed in 2817. My bad. 2814. There you go. So, yeah. And then the wrong password. Now, I'm through and we're going to say. But first, we need to actually start up the server for this one. Go server. Here you go. Server's up. Got all of that open. Now I'm going to say hello or help. You see, it's going to come back with a bad password. So instead of doing that, console, we can say that it's not having any of it. So instead of doing all of that, we're going to come through and we're going to change our password to secure password. Now, come through. Now we try to run. And it appears I've typed in the password wrong again. Uh, um, actually see, I forgot to make the P uppercase. Um, in the future, I actually do intend to remove that so people can't just look over your shoulder and figure out your password. There we go. Now we're going to type in help. Now we have this command. All right. We've got all of our little options here. What you want. Set group. So with that group command, type in set group, space the name. So we're actually gonna say set god owner. Say set group god to owner and god. Let's say that's your username. So actually, what we'll do is set Preston mod mod is lowercase as we can check in our um post file that group pressed in mod now we come back through we check it and resources server cobalt essentials cobalt db we'll now see that their permission god group of owner and preston now has the group of mod um, I'm not actually going to demo it in this video, but once you join the server um, with either of these solutions, you will have owner and you'll be able to run any of those commands that you could run in the Archon. It's actually worth mentioning that the Archon will allow you to run any command that you'd normally be able to run on the server. Either way, that's all. Sticking around and enjoy Cobalt Essentials. If you have any questions, you can join our Discord. Our support team is fairly active on there. Thank you. See you later.